vlog. I've literally just finished filming my Wheel of TBR video for May. Uh, you may be wondering where my last week's vlog was. Well, honestly it wasn't very good, so I decided not to post it. Nothing exciting happened in the week. I didn't read that much and what I ha did read I'd already spoken to you about the previous week. I just wasn't all that happy with it and I wasn't going to post it just for the sake of it. So hopefully this week's vlog will be better. Not that I have anything exciting planned this week either, but I do have a new TBR now. And y'all, I bloody did it. Last month's TBR, April's TBR. I did it. The Wheel TBR. I took that bitch down. I read all 12 books on there for like the first time since I started this whole bloody thing with the Wheel. <laughs> so I'm feeling all kinds of proud of myself. So I should probably let you know before I show you the new TBR, which you've probably already seen anyway, I should let you know what I read last week soon as there wasn't a vlog up. So firstly, I did manage to finish out A Clash of Kings in time for the live show. I will link the live show for you if you want to hear our thoughts on this one. It was on Rachel's channel. It was a lot of fun as well, especially because the Battle of Winterfell was happening that night. So we had so many theories. I was completely off. And I actually stayed up till 2am to watch that episode and I'm so glad I did. No regrets. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Probably going to be doing that for the next few episodes that we have left. Shout out to my girl Becca for letting me know that I could download the Now TV free trial and watch it live on Sky Atlantic. I now also have my mum's Sky Go code though because she's bougie and she has Sky so I can watch it now for free, live, but it is at 2am. Oh well, again, no regrets, 10 out of 10 would recommend. <laughs> so I was planning on filming my Wheel of TBR video yesterday, but I was all kinds of shattered after staying up because obviously it didn't finish till like 3.30 a.m. And then I couldn't sleep, honestly, until like 5 a.m. because I'm still reeling. I've watched it twice. The first time I watched it alone and I was like messaging Becca at the ad breaks because Massey had work yesterday, like early. So he didn't watch it with me. So we watched it again last night and I'm just sat there looking at him like, you know, all smug because I knew what was gonna happen and he didn't. Honestly though, watching it for the second time, I was just as anxious. It was such a good episode. Like, Wow. My initial reaction was holy fucking footballs and I still stand by that. So I finished out this one from the wheel and my last wheel book I was cutting it fine but I managed to finish Good Omens this morning by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. I was listening to the audiobooks I had the last hour so I listened to it as I was getting ready and setting up the stuff for the wheel and I loved this. Oh I forgot to give you the rating. I gave this one four stars just because I thought it was a bit more dense. It's definitely setting things up though. Some of my favourite female characters are introduced in this such as Brienne and Marjorie kind Kind of. Also Ygritte and Gilly. Oh and Asher as well. And also there were so many kind of like foreshadowing scenes in this. The bit where Danny goes to the house of the Undying. Obviously I'm not going to say any spoilers or anything. Oh it was a lot. <laughs> But I was so happy I reread this, especially with the hype of the new season. And like I said, I finished this one out this morning. I think I'm giving this five stars. The audiobook was so good, that might be why. I don't imagine everybody will rate it as highly as me. It's definitely a British thing. So many British-isms. It's our kind of sense of humour. It takes the piss a lot out of the way we live. And I just, I lived for this. If you didn't already know, this one is about an angel and a demon who are kind of friends. And they are trying to stop the apocalypse because the spawn of Satan has been born. There's the four horsemen in there but everything is just being kind of comically skewed I guess and oh it's just so good I cannot wait for the TV ad adaptation which is coming out in May so this month when you're watching this and in terms of the owls I only had two owls left to finish so for Ancient Runes was a retelling so I picked up Alice by Christina Henry I did finish this I absolutely loved it I gave it a four star though this is a very twisted creepy retelling of Alice in Wonderland it doesn't use a lot from the original stories it's completely its own thing but we have some of the characters that we know from that original tale such as Alice of course and the rabbit the caterpillar the walrus Cheshire as well although he's not a cat like all the animals we know from the original story they are actual humans in this but they have magic they're known as magicians but this is absolutely brutal very adult I wouldn't recommend it to everybody massive trigger warnings for sexual violence and rape in this and the way that girls and women are treated in this book oh it's a lot it's a lot to read but I like dark and messed up stuff the only reason I think I dropped it from a five to a four was that the ending was a little bit underwhelming. We were following Alice on this kind of mission. At the beginning of this book, she has been in a hospital for 10 years after coming back from, well, not necessarily Wonderland, but dealing with the white rabbit who raped her and wanted to keep her as her own. She escaped him, 
but when she came back she was put into this kind of like mental health ward I guess in this hospital and she can't remember much if anything from her time being held captive by him I guess. She forms a friendship with a guy called the Hatcher who's an axe murderer who's also locked up in this hospital and we have the Jabberwocky as well who's a villain who is kind of released at the beginning of this book and they just have to go on a mission and they meet all these characters that are kind of like territory bosses in this and they all trade in girls. So it's real messed up and creepy. Like I said, the only reason I kind of dropped it was that the ending was a little bit underwhelming. There's all this anticipation of what's gonna to happen towards the end and it was over really, really quickly, but it was so, so good. Um, so I finished out this for Ancient Runes, which leaves me with just Red Queen, which is the sequel. As it's a sequel, I can't tell you too much about this one without spoiling the first one, but I am 254 pages in. So I have about 60 pages left to go by the end of tonight because it's the end of the month and the end of the owl. So if I read this for Defense Against the Dark Arts, I finished all 12 of the owl's exams and I can be a curse breaker. And that's just what I wanted. So I only have this one left to read for April. So I hope to finish this one tonight. Right now though, obviously I'm going to be editing my wheel video. I hope to get that out today as well. And in case you haven't seen my wheel, these are the 12 I chose this month. It's not as crazy as some of my previous Wheel of TBRs, TBRs have been, but I have no idea what I'm gonna pick up first. I am co-hosting a readathon this month, which is Bingoathon. I'll leave the announcement in the description. That's happening from the 12th to the 18th. We have a bingo board. I'm co-hosting it with Ola from Ola Quinn. She very kindly asked me to co-host with her and Natasha from My Reading is Odd. And the board is pretty simple. There's some easy challenges on there. You can double up, triple up, quadruple up on challenges if you want. And we have the group read as well, which is in this stack, which is Once and Future. So that should be pretty simple. Like you don't have to fill in the whole board or anything. So I will be making a separate TBR for that with some of these hopefully included. So I don't know from this one, which one I'm gonna pick up first. I need to figure out my TBR for bingo -a first before I pick anything up. So it's those 12 and also I forgot <laughs> to add this one in for one of the spins, which is the Storm of Swords part one. Obviously I'm a co-host for the Song of Ice and Fire read-along, aren't I? So I would like to read the first half. This is Steel and Snow by the end of this month too. So technically 13 books this month, but knowing me, I'll probably procrastinate on that one and leave it until June and have to read the whole thing, won't I? So that's the plan for today. I am going to be editing, finishing this out, and then I'll probably catch up with you tomorrow and let you know what I'm going to read for first from my wheel TBR. So I'll catch you then. Hello, it's not Wednesday my dudes, it's actually Thursday but it felt weird doing a vlog and not saying that. So on Tuesday night I managed it, I finished out Red Queen, I finished the last 50 or 60 pages whilst my TBR wheel was uploading. It took bloody ages to export and upload so I read this and I managed to complete it within the time frame so I completed all 12 of my owls and I get to be a curse breaker. <laughs> Small victories y'all. I will say though, I didn't enjoy this one as much as the first one, I was quite disappointed with this one actually. I can't talk to you too much about it because obviously it's a sequel and we're following the same characters and it just leads on immediately from the first book. However, this was so slow, it almost felt like a stream of consciousness, like it, we were just in Alice's head for the majority of this. There wasn't much dialogue, so it felt like the story was all being told in her inner thoughts. So it kind of plodded along with her being like, oh, and Alice starts to realise something and this is what she's gonna do now, and if she does this, this will happen, and it was just a little bit boring, honestly. It was also a little bit confusing at times. It didn't have the magic, I guess, from the first one like obviously these are brutal stories read these retellings they're not for everybody but it wasn't as brutal as the first one we didn't have as many kind of returning characters or anyone from the original tales really it's called red queen so we did have the red queen but but it felt a little bit lackluster like there wasn't as many nods to the original stories and I just got bored. <laughs> so this one didn't really surprise me. I really enjoyed the first one. I gave that four stars as I, as I said. Uh, this one though, I think I'm giving it three stars. It was okay, like the writing was fine. We had one returning character from the first book that I really liked their parts. But apart from that, it just was a bit naff. <laughs> And it was a touch obvious. It was a really quick read though, because these books are really like, this one's like only 320 pages. So I'm glad I read it. Thank you again to Joelle for sending these to me, even though I didn't like this one as much as the first one. I still definitely want to read more Christina Henry. I know she's done a Peter Pan retelling that I want to check out. So I will try and pick that up at some point. <laughs> and I'm going to keep it real with you. Yesterday and today, I've not been doing so well. Like yesterday, 
was just feeling really low. Oh, the Angelica mug is back, by the way. Um, but yesterday I wasn't doing so good. Uh, I did manage to turn it around, though, thanks to Massey. He got me snacks and flowers. Bless him. Honestly, I don't know what I did in a past life to deserve that guy. He is the best. I was also chatting to some of my booktube friends last night, and that kind of helped. And then this morning I was fine, and this afternoon it's kind of hit me again, and I'm just feeling really low for no reason. It's so frustrating. But hey, it is what it is. Yesterday, though, uh, because I was feeling so low, I got into the bath, and I did... <laughs> I always do and I read and I actually read the whole of the silent patient I'm not gonna say his name again because that was a train wreck in my TBR so I did say what this one was about in that TBR I will link it if you haven't seen it this one is based around a woman who is accused of the murder of her husband he was found tied to a chair and he was shot in the face like five times and she was found next like well standing near him and she'd slit her own wrist like she tried to commit suicide so massive trigger warnings for that in this book however when the police came yep I've got a bell tricks as always um she just went mute she's not spoken in years um this is more so the perspective of her psychotherapist though who is treating her at this place called the grove we do occasionally get a diary entry from alicia who's the woman who was accused of the murder but she, like i said she hasn't really spoken so we get to find out a little bit about the events leading up to this tragedy um but mostly we are in the psychotherapist's head he is called theo we find out more about his life I did really like this actually, like I read this so quickly, this is definitely a page turner. So he is kind of obsessed with finding out what actually happened and why she's chosen not to speak. There are lots of nods to a Greek tragedy in this book. And I don't think I've read a thriller before that's from the perspective of a psychotherapist. So it's seeing all the ins and outs of the treatment and the different methods for therapy and stuff was really interesting, especially as I'm someone who obviously struggles with mental health myself. I wouldn't say it has the best rep for it. I was wondering if I could use this for mental health or fun, but probably not. <laughs> but this definitely had me guessing up until the very end. You're trying to figure out if she actually is guilty, if she's not guilty, because obviously we don't know her story and as you'd expect her therapist Theo is kind of going back and speaking to everybody in her life from that time so we have some suspects if you will and you don't really find the reveal out until the very end and I'd say just like two pages before the reveal I did guess it but it was a good one this thriller left me satisfied honestly it did sometimes it will get to the reveal or the twist and I'm like oh man really this wasn't the case. I thought this was really cleverly done. I would I would recommend it. I read this, like I said, in one sitting. It took me like, I'd say three hours to read this, but I didn't want to stop. I needed to find out what the actual deal was with this woman. Did she kill her husband and why? And also her reasons for not speaking and also what happens in Theo with his life and his past. There's so much, so much. This was really well done. The characters, definitely were really well developed. As thrillers go guys, this is a good one. I understand why there is so much hype surrounding this. I haven't read a lot of thrillers, but I've read quite a lot. So I wouldn't say I'm easily shocked. So I do find a lot of thrillers to be predictable. This definitely wasn't. Would recommend, I'm giving it four stars. Also thanks to Bobby for sending this one to me. <laughs> so it's around four o'clock now. I don't have anything planned this evening. Massey is at football, so he won't be home till later. So I'm gonna pick up my next read. And the one I think I'm gonna pick up is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. I don't know if I'm in the right mindset for this right now, feeling as low as I am. So if it does become too much for me, I probably will set it aside and pick up something a bit more lighthearted. But I do wanna try it, obviously. Um, I said in my video it was my highest rated. Actually, technically it wasn't what well, Ascension should have been. Um, yeah, I made a boo-boo and forgot to add that to my Goodreads TBR. I thought all of them were on there, but apparently not, so. <laughs> I'd pick this one, but I'm still sticking with this one because a lot of people want to hear my thoughts on it. Or at least that's what they've told me, so I still do want to try it. So yeah, it might be a bit much. It's a World War II fiction. Uh, obviously, it's set in France. We're following the relationship between two sisters at this time. I think they're very different characters and the way they deal with things is very differently. So it should be an interesting one. Everybody seems to bloody love this. So although it's not my genre, I do want to try it out. And I know it's going to make me cry. So I assumed maybe whilst I'm already feeling low, if this makes me cry, it's fine. <laughs> not that I expect to read the whole thing just now because it is like 440 pages and this edition has quite small text. So we'll see how I get on with this. I also do want to pick up A Storm of Swords at some point in the next few days as well um, because obviously live show. And Becca has told me that she's already started it and this is just so much more fast paced and more interesting than A Clash of Kings was. Which makes me want to read it and get a jump on it. So I'll probably do that too. So if this gets too much, I'll read this one because this is a reread. So all the devastation and deaths in this, I'm already expecting. So this is going to be a heavy read, but you know me. When I'm not doing my best, I will put myself into 
a different world and just lose myself in a book. So that's the plan. So I think I'm going to read like the first 50 to 100 pages of this. I'll let you know my thoughts. I'll let you know if it's too much for me today. And if it is, I'll pick something else. So that's what I'm going to go do. I'm going to get myself under a blanket with a cat, with my cup of tea. And yeah... Let's, let's try this. I'll also say, um, just before I begin this, I did get a comment from somebody in my TBR who let me know a lot of the historical inaccuracies and there are some issues with this book, um, which I won't go into now. I will read it and I'll refer back to what they told me and I'll let you know when I come to finish it. They did say it's still a good story though. It's very well rounded and well written. It's just not all that accurate for the time frame and everything. You know what I mean. Anyway. I'm gonna stop procrastinating and putting off this devastation and I'm gonna go try it. <laughs> so update, an hour has gone past and I haven't read any of this. I've been watching reading vlogs, but Tiberius is demanding my full attention. He's just going around the house fucking shit up and yelling at me, standard. <laughs> yep, there he is. That's his go-to. I mean, I'm giving you attention. Here's a list of things I've done to procrastinate from starting reading this book. Firstly, I watched a lot of YouTube. Secondly, I made myself some toast. Because who doesn't want toast at 5.30 on a Thursday evening? Also, I watched another episode of The Office and I have been playing with the cats. All because I'm scared to start this. <sighs> but we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Mass is going to be home soon. And then I'm going to have to pay him some attention. <laughs> so I best go start on it. Oh, also, Bellatrix is having a crazy half hour. She's a wild beast. She's gonna run. She's gonna do it. Oh, no, nope, she's licking her butt. That was anticlimactic, wasn't it? Again, I bet you're glad for this content. <laughs> okay, so it's now 7pm and I've only read... 32 pages of this, I'm on chapter 5. It's beautifully written so far. The little, like, the first bit was kind of ominous because we have someone looking back, one of the sisters looking back at the war and she's in a bad way. She's um, ill at the end of her life kind of thing. So then we go back to Paris, well, France in the 1940s and we see where it begins. And one of them has kids. Ah, this is going to be brutal. So far... It's making me really hungry, <laughs> like they're eating some good food. That's not going to last long. And I've just got to the part, like I said, chapter five, and the Germans have just invaded Paris. Well, the Germans have just kind of flown over Paris with bombs. So yeah, it was nice at the beginning. The rest of this is going to be brutal, but it has taken me so long just to read that first 30 pages because I just, I, I'm trepidatious about it. I don't, I'm not excited for this because it's war fiction, but I'm going to take everybody's word for it and I am going to read it, I promise. So what I'm going to do, because I keep getting distracted and just not wanting to read it and just watching YouTube instead, is I'm going to run a bath because I can't do that in the bath. So that's the plan. I'll read some more of this. If it bums me out too much, <laughs> I will pick up some Storm of Swords. As I said, this won't bum me out because, you know, I know the deal with this one. So yeah. That's the plan. I'll probably catch up with you tomorrow. <laughs> hey y'all, happy Friday. So I haven't made much progress into this. I'm 100 pages in though. And I will say I'm enjoying it. I don't think I gave you a synopsis for this one yesterday, but we're following two sisters in Nazi occupied France in the 1940s, so World War II. The elder sister is Vianne, or VN, I'm assuming is how you pronounce it. That sounds more French. And she lives in the countryside and her husband has recently had to go away to war. She has a young daughter and Bellatrix is here, hence the tale. And then the younger one, Isabel, lives in Paris and she keeps getting kicked out of like finishing schools. She's much more spirited, I guess, than her elder sister who's more practical. But when the Nazis arrive and they start dropping bombs in Paris, Isabel has to go and stay with her elder sister, Vianne. Obviously, Vianne's husband is now away. And then France surrenders and the Nazis come in and they, well, there's a lot of them that have to stay with the local people in this country side town. Wow, coherent as always. But we have a Nazi soldier. Sorry, Bellatrix is just, 
she's doing her thing and he has to stay with Vianne and Isabel. Isabel is not happy about it but he seems like an okay guy so I'm assuming there might be a romance that's going into this. I don't know what to expect from this honestly. I'm expecting devastation. So I'm liking it so far. The writing is beautiful. It's not too slow. There's always something happening in every chapter so far. I really like the differences in the character between the two sisters. They're kind of yin and yang. So as much as I am kind of rooting for Isabel because she wants to fight this war however she can, I can totally see why Vianne is being a lot more practical and cautious for good reason because she has a young daughter. But this is interesting. I can see why people so well, why so many people love it. And although it's not my genre, I do appreciate seeing kind of like the women's war, what these women were doing to help any way they can at this time and you know, just survive in general. But I do fully expect this to make me cry. As fast paced as this reads though, I will say it's taken me a while to get through that first 100 pages. I don't know if it's just me. Hopefully the rest of it will go quicker. I'm hoping to read more of this later tonight. But first, I received a package in the mail and I'm pretty sure this is from my friend Joelle. She messaged me and told me to expect something out of the blue. She's such a babe. She has a booktube channel. I will link it in the description. Please do go and check her out. She is absolutely amazing and I'm so lucky that she's my friend. And she told me she actually wants to buddy read this book with me in June as well. So that's exciting. So let's see what it is. Two books. There's two books. Joelle, this is way too much. I swear I just said I wanted to check out more Christina Henry books. Are you kidding me, Joelle? I really, really liked Alice. These are very dark, twisted, not for everybody, creepy ass retellings of original kind of fairy tales. So this one's obviously a Peter Pan one. I've heard amazing things about this one. And then we have The Mermaid, which I'm assuming obviously will be The Little Mermaid. I'm so excited to see Christina Henry's take on these two stories. Thank you so much, Duelle. I cannot wait to read these. So if I've heard correctly, I think this one is from the perspective of Wendy. And in this one, we have P.T. Barnum, who's looking for a mermaid. So that's so cool. Oh, thanks so much, Duelle. Honestly, you're an absolute star. You didn't need to go ahead and get me anything, let alone two bloody books. What have I done to deserve you? This blows my mind. Thank you so much. I cannot wait to read these. Let me know guys if you've read these, uh, what your favourite was, which one should I prioritise? I need to figure out as well which one Joelle wants to read in June. I think she might have read this one so we could be reading this one next month. So that's amazing. So yeah, that's my update for today. I've only read 100 pages of this. I hope to continue with it. And also, just now, I am going to meet Massey. We're gonna go pop into town, possibly go out and get some food and some drinks. We'll probably go to Weatherspoons because it's cheap and cheerful and I'm obsessed with their halloumi fries right now. So that's probably what we're gonna do. So I will give you an update once I've read some more. Before you came round, my heart would never be much faster. Before you came round, I was ready to slow down Before you came round, I was heading for a small disaster Before you came round, I was ready to blow me down <laughs> Hey lads, happy Sunday. Today I've been doing some filming. I filmed a fairy loot unboxing because I'm now a rep. Hashtag blessed. I know that was cringy. <laughs> and I've also filmed my TBR for Bingoathon, which is exciting. So it's been a good day so far. I got some good stuff in the fairy loot as well. I will link that if you want to watch it. It was my first, so I don't know how good it was in comparison to other people who do them every month, but it's the first ever box I've received. Really, really lucky that they reached out to me uh, because I've not really got the <laughs> finances, I guess, to go out and buy subscription boxes all the time or you know even try them. So yeah, this was just such a nice surprise. I got, I'm not gonna show you everything, but I got a really cool, Darker Shade of Magic, V.E. Schwab inspired book sleeve. So that's amazing because I don't own any book sleeves, but I do now. And the other thing I wanted to show you was this Mr. Kindly tea strainer, Mr. Kindly from Never Night. How adorable is this? It just sits on your mug. So, so cute. I don't have, well, I have some loose leaf tea, but it's like my backup tea for when I run out of tea bags, but it's like really fancy. So I should probably actually drink that in this. You just pop his wee head off, the tea goes in there just so cute. <laughs> Yet more evidence to leave around the house of my crazy cat lady ways. <laughs> and the book sounds good too. It's Nocturna by Maya Mutane. I think that's how you pronounce it. I will figure that out. Um, but this one seems like it's my kind of thing. There's like dark magic. We have a 
female character who's a thief and a face shifter and she can use like magic and then we have a prince who is dabbling in forbidden magic and yeah it just sounds really good anything with thieves in it and obviously it's fantasy and it's just magic and yeah I've not heard much about it but I'm excited to get to this one also it has beautiful sprayed edges because <laughs> I'm not a massive massive fan of sprayed edges just because I think that they make the reading sometimes difficult like sometimes the pages stick but I think they look beautiful I'd never do it myself though because I would just mess everything up knowing me <laughs> so in terms of a reading update I have now made it to page 220 no 219 so I'm on chapter 20 and I do really like it it's a little bit slower than some books that I've read it's not slow in any in any regard it's definitely fast paced in the sense that something is happening in every chapter and the stakes are a lot higher now and it's getting really really interesting I've not cried yet <laughs> I know that's probably going to happen in the last uh, 200 pages of this but I wish I had have got a bit further in this honestly I don't have any excuses yesterday I went to therapy and then Massey and I just watched a lot of Netflix and today I woke up quite late and I haven't had a chance to pick it up yet but I'm hoping to finish this out by the end of today so I'll let you know my thoughts then when I come to finish this. I have also started listening to the audiobook for A Storm of Swords though. I just wanted to listen to an audiobook at some point this month and this one was there. I do like the narrator. The accents are all a little bit strange though. Some of them are Bristolian, some of them are Irish and Scottish up north and then we'll have like Tyrion who's Welsh which is just weird. Also some of the name pronunciations are off to what we're used to listening to in the show, well hearing in the show so yeah apart from that though I do enjoy these audiobooks and I'm already five hours into this. I have been listening to it on two times speed though um, but this is fun. It's a lot more fast paced than the second book was A Clash of Kings already and we've had some more of my favourite female characters now introduced. We have Marjorie and we have her grandmother, the Lady of Fawns. She's up there in terms of Tyrion as my favourite characters just for the humour alone. So tonight I hope to finish this one out and possibly listen to some more of this. I don't know but tonight it is the next episode of Game of Thrones and it's Bank Holiday Monday tomorrow so Massey's not at work so we can literally stay up till 2am to watch this episode. So right now we're gonna go out to the shops and get some snacks and stuff, some fuel to keep us up till 2am because we're old now. So I don't have any excuses, I have some time to finish this one so I hope to do that. Also tomorrow as I said it's Bank Holiday Monday so ideally I will spend the full day reading tomorrow. Hopefully, so hopefully I'll be done with that one so I can pick up another one. But yeah, I'll give you an update tomorrow and let you know, hopefully, my final thoughts on this. Like, I need to finish this and I fully expect to cry. <laughs> Hey my dudes, it's now Tuesday. Let's wrap up what I read this week. I didn't vlog yesterday because I was super cranky. I had to have a nana nap in the afternoon because I stayed up, didn't I, to watch Game of Thrones on Sunday night. Uh, Massey was going to stay up and then he got to 1am 1 1 sorry, and he just called it, he went to bed. So I ended up watching that on my own. <laughs> and what an episode. I wasn't expecting it to be as crazy as that. I thought this one would be a bit chill and the last two would be a bit crazy, but... Nope, also they're making some really questionable choices now and I'm so scared about where this is going. I'm definitely gonna stay up again next week and watch the next one because I've heard that one is the, the big one. But I'm so nervous to see where it goes because I'm just so invested in these characters and this story that I've known for so long. I'm just, I'm just, I'm with everybody. We're all, we're all nervous, right? <laughs> but on Sunday night, as I was waiting for Game of Thrones, I managed to finish out The Nightingale, finally. And I really liked this, I did. I can completely see its merit. I can see why everybody loves it. It's a really, really, really good book, but it's not my genre. I, I just didn't love it as much as I know everybody else did because war fiction, historical fiction, for some reason, I just can't connect to it. Even though this was, I know, objectively, amazing. What is wrong with me? But yet again, I know some people out there don't do fantasy and that blows my mind. I just clearly am not one for historical fiction, especially those set in around a war. Because I've tried like four now. <laughs> I tried All the Light We Cannot See, I tried Shades of Grey, this one and The Book Thief. I think The Book Thief was my favourite. This one 
probably my second favourite out of those. But I think these books are lost on me, honestly. But I am glad I've read it because I can see why everybody loves this so much. I think it was really well done. Um, I really liked seeing the women's side of this war. I didn't cry, but I did tear up at the end because that was emotional. But also I was kind of you know, excited for Game of Thrones and so it was a weird time to be reading this. So maybe I would have cried if I didn't have that kind of like underlying excitement for the next episode. But nevertheless, I thought this was great. I loved Isabel as a character, I loved Vienne as a character. It was fast paced, although I did start getting a little bit worried at parts because it just kept getting worse like with all these books do. You have this hope and then, you know, a few chapters further into it, something bad happens and then next chapter something worse happens and it just kept going with this one. But that is what you expect, obviously it's based on true events. I will say, I think I already said in this vlog, I did get a comment about this book and about how inaccurate it is, you know, for the time and the war and, you know, the setting, etc. So I'll let you do your own research into that, um, but that aside, I did really enjoy this book, although <laughs> From that person's comment, I know that this wasn't very accurate at all, especially when it comes to the treatment of Jews and the anti-Semitism in France. It seems to be in this book that a lot of that is mostly, it's just the Germans that are asking for that to happen. But in reality, the French weren't all that opposed, apparently. <laughs> like I said, I'll let you do your own research. Also, there was some inaccuracies to do with just little things like food and setting and the timeline for certain events and stuff. But yeah, this was great. I really liked it. I don't know what I'm rating it because my heart says, in, in, like in enjoyment wise, a 3.5. But I don't want to do that to this book because really it's a four star. Do I round it up to a four star because I see its merit? Or do I keep it at 3.5 but then I'll have to put it as a free on Goodreads and people will be mad at me. <laughs> Even if I say this was great, I just didn't enjoy it as much as most people because it's war fiction and that's not my thing. I can't connect to these stories. Basically I watched Books and Lala's rating video and now I'm overthinking everything. I don't know. I'll maybe wait until the end of the month to give this a rating upon my wrap up. It probably will be a four though. I mean, it was great. It had me tearing up at the end, so it did get some emotion out of me and some connection. But I did find find that this took me like the whole week because it didn't, it, although it felt fast paced, it dragged in my own brain. <laughs> I don't know why. Again, what is wrong with me? I don't know what else to say about this one. This was really good. I'd highly recommend it to the majority of you. Even if you haven't really read any fic like historical fiction set in war, I'd say maybe start with this one. This isn't as brutal as some of those that I've read. Um, it did kind of rush over parts to do with like concentration camps and things. Whereas I've read like Between Shades of Grey was more so that kind of thing. Um, so this one is a little bit easier, although it will make you cry. <laughs> and also massive trigger warnings for pretty much everything in this book. You know, violence, sexual violence, all of it. I did really like the activism kind of stuff, the rebels, if you will. This was really interesting. I haven't obviously grown up hearing about how the war was in France. I've only really heard of it in England, mostly. But obviously through books, I'm learning more, even if it's not 100% accurate. It is to an extent, some of this stuff did actually happen, obviously. Uh, yeah, I'm rambling. I really like this. I would recommend it. I still don't know what I'm going to rate it, though. <laughs> so yesterday, I didn't really do much of anything, but I did pick up my next book, so I might as well just tell you about it. The next one I decided to pick up was Genuine Fraud by E. Lockhart. E. Lockhart wrote We Were Liars, which I did really like. And I'm about halfway into this. This reads so, so quickly. Plus, it's only 260 pages, so I'm around 130 pages in. It doesn't necessarily have chapters, but each kind of part of this story is only like one page for some of them, two or three pages, so it's so quick and it's all told from the perspective of a woman named Jules. Although in the first chapter, this isn't a spoiler, I won't tell you too much because it's a thriller and I don't want to spoil anything, but in the first chapter we have Jules and she meets someone in a hotel gym. They organise to do this quiz and like have drinks, but she, we know that she's Jules, but yet she introduces herself as Imogen. So clearly she has like a double identity. Is she a spy? Is she taking on someone's identity? Does she maybe have mental health issues? 
we don't know. <laughs> She's a very interesting character. I'm very confused as to where this is going to go though. Like I haven't predicted it yet. We have a disappearance. It's jumping around a lot in time so it can be a bit confusing. Um, it seems to be that we're going backwards. So it'll be like one week from the event, two weeks before that, two days before that and it's just kind of going back to the beginning of when this disappearance happened. We find out more about Jules and her kind of backstory, the way she grew up, but not a lot. And I still don't know her motivations for this, but I have my suspicions, but this is interesting. I wanna know why Jules is pretending to be Imogen. That's what I wanna know. So yeah, hmm. I don't have any predictions yet though. I'll probably need to read a bit more before I kind of figure out what's going on. I hope it's not too predictable. A lot of people have told me that it's not that predictable. Obviously Becca from Becca in the Books, my bae, she chose this one for me from my wheel for Phone a Friend, the prompt that came up and she liked it. She read it really quickly. So I think I'll be the same. I trust her opinion, obviously. <laughs> so this week I didn't read as much as I wanted to, but I didn't do bad. I think The Nightingale just took, uh, took some time, didn't it? But at the beginning of the week, I finished Out Red Queen by Christina Henry. I only had like, 50 or 60 pages of this left. This one was for my last owls for the owls magical readathon so very happy I completed this one in time. Unfortunately didn't love it as much as the first book Alice. I gave this one three stars but Joelle has since told me um, that we are getting a third book so that's exciting. I'm excited to see how this like comes to a close because there's definitely things that were left unanswered in this. I also read The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelidis. Michaelidis. I still don't know. I've heard a million different versions of how you pronounce this name. Okay, that's an exaggeration, but you get what I mean. And this is a psychological thriller. I really enjoyed this one. Uh, you heard my thoughts on it. I didn't predict it until the very last page before the reveal. So that's a win in my book. I really liked the characters in here and how it was told. It was very intriguing. I didn't want to stop reading it. And I gave this one a four star. I would recommend this if you are wanting a new thriller to try out. And then I finished out The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna, as you saw. I don't know what I'm rating this, as I said. I did enjoy it. I will check out more of her books. I don't know when, <laughs> but I'm not ready to give up on this genre and just say no, no more war fiction ever, because this was really good. I did enjoy it. I just don't think I have enjoyed it as much as most people have seemed to have enjoyed this. You get what I mean. <laughs> I'm also, as I said, 130 pages into Genuine Fraud. Excited to see how this one goes. And then I have listened to some of A Storm of Swords, the audiobook. I am on, well, I've listened to about five hours still of this, so not bad. <laughs> So that's this week's vlog, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I'm not sure if it's any good. I had some bad days this week. I don't know, but I read some stuff, so that's always good. <laughs> like I said, I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe if you care to do so, as always, and I will catch you in my next one, my dudes. Bye.